What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial. Today we're going to talk about using SketchUp's built-in terrain modeling tools in the sandbox. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the uh, first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to enable the sandbox tools. To do that, you're going to go up to your extension manager under window. So go to window, extension manager, and this should be built into your version of SketchUp. And this is not a pro tool or anything like that. Um, this comes with the uh, free version of SketchUp as well and so basically you're going to want to make sure that this little box um, on the right hand side by sandbox tools is marked as enabled so you can go ahead and click on this um, so that it says enabled and then you're going to click apply changes and that'll load the sandbox tools in SketchUp so you should be able to access them and then uh, to access the sandbox toolbar uh, you can just right click up here in your uh, toolbar area and come down here and select sandbox and that's going to pop up your sandbox tools right here. And uh, so there's a couple different ways that you can create a terrain in SketchUp. Um, the first is you can bring in a set of contours. So contours are basically lines um, that go on maps that have elevations associated with them. So I just kind of drew these in myself just as kind of a just as kind of an example, but you can see how if I look at them top down, they're just a set of lines, but then if I kind of rotate, you can see how they have heights associated with them, and so I move them to the correct heights. So this is at 10 feet, this is at 9 feet, um, etc. So once you've got a set of lines like this, what you can do is you can drag your mouse across them, um, just like this, and then you can come in here, and there's the first option is from contours. And uh, basically this is going to come in here and it's going to create a terrain based on these contours. So just come in here, click this from contours option, and you can see how what that does is that comes in here and that um, that creates kind of a mesh between your different lines or a uh, like a terrain type object. And so if we turn our hidden geometry on, what we can see is what this does is this basically draws a whole bunch of uh, um, softened lines um, in between all the different points. Uh, in our segments you can see how every time our line has a segment it has a little line coming off of it and so that's how SketchUp is creating these different faces in here so you can see if I click on them with hidden geometry turned on each one of them pops up as a singular face but if I turn hidden ge geometry off then I can just select the face in general because all those lines are soft. So anyway, that's one way to come in here and create a terrain. Um, the other way is SketchUp actually has this cool little tool called the uh, From Scratch option. And if you click on that, uh, what that's gonna do is that's going to um, let you draw a grid, basically. You, so you can see how down in the corner, when I select this, it says grid spacing 10 feet. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and type in one foot and hit the enter key, but basically what that's gonna do is you can see how when I click and I move my mouse, there's a whole bunch of little hash marks in here, just like this, and so basically there's a hash mark every foot, and so if I type in 50 feet, you can see how that's gonna basically, um, that's gonna give me 50 little uh, squares over in here. Then if I move the, my mouse the other way, you can see how it kinda like roughs out um, a grid for you so it's basically drawing a series of one foot squares so if I type in 50 feet and hit the enter key now I've got a 50 foot by 50 foot grid in here and so once you have a grid what you can do is you can use the rest of the sandbox tools to come in here and actually edit this terrain and customize it and so there's a couple different options that come with sandbox tools in SketchUp the first is going to be the smooth tool and the smooth tool is actually designed for you to come in here and uh, edit grids like this so basically or really kind of any any um, surface but basically the way this is going to work is you're going to come in here and you can double click inside this face and then you can click the smooth tool and you can see what that does is that gives you this circle right here so you can see how you've got like a 30 foot circle in here and I'm going to make this a little smaller I'm going to go in and type in probably 10 foot and hit the enter key and you can see what that did is that adjusted the radius um, of this object and so basically all this is going to do is if I click on this I can click and drag and this is actually going to come in here and this is going to edit this mesh so and you can see how you can see how it kind of smooths this out when you're doing it so uh, and what I mean by that is you can see how in the middle this stretches this out a long way and then it becomes a little more gradual as you get near the edge just like this and so what that does is that allows you to come in here and do some kind of like organic terrain type modeling in here. So I could change this to a five foot 
I could change this to a five foot circle just like this. I could change this to like a 30 foot circle. Whoops. I could change this to a 30 foot circle and kind of adjust the entire face just like this. So it's really good for coming in here and uh, editing these grids that you create. So, and that should work over here on the terrain you created as well. So you can see how if I come in here and uh, I click inside this group that I created with my, uh, with my contours, and then I activate the smooth tool, I can come in here and I can do the same thing. I can adjust and move parts and pieces of that mesh around as well. So really you can do this with pretty much any face. So you don't have to just, um, you don't have to just use this for um, terrain either. A lot of people have used this for like sculpting and stuff like that in SketchUp. So you can use this, uh, this smooth tool to come in here and edit all your geometry and stuff like that. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the stamp tool. And so basically the way the stamp tool works is um, basically if you have an object that's like a group or a component, just like this. Um, so I've created this little like um, this little like uh, house outline model in here. But basically, if you've got an object like this, the stamp tool will actually take the terrain down here and it'll create a flat pad for your object. So in this case, uh, what you can do is you can select your object and then you can come up here and you can select stamp just like this. And you can see how it gives you this kind of red square right here. And uh, basically what it tells me is to select the mesh. So it's saying, okay, we're gonna create this square, uh, this flat pad for your object, but you need to tell me what face to make that out of. So if I click on this face right here, what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna come in here and that's gonna create a flat pad just like this um, for your object. And you can see how that created a few issues over here off to the side. So you may have to come in here and kind of like fill some stuff in a little bit. If this doesn't work perfectly. But you can see how all I did on that one is I just came in here and I just kind of like drew these pieces in. And I didn't do these exactly right. Probably more what you're going to want to do is do kind of a... Again, just remember that this mesh is made up of triangular shapes, so I'm just kind of drawing triangles across here to kind of fill in my face. But you can see how now what I've got is I've got this flat pad that I can set this house on. So now I can move this house model down just like this, and that'll sit on top of my, uh, on top of my mesh just like that. And so that's fairly useful for dropping things onto meshes and that kind of thing. Um, so, but sometimes you don't necessarily want to change this mesh below. What you want to do is you want to create a shape, um, you know, like a road or something like that, that actually like sits on this face. And so what you're going to do to do that is I'm just going to draw like a general curving road shape. I'll offset it a little bit just like this. And then we'll put that in a group. All right, and the first thing you may want to do is you may want to come in here and um, you may want to use an extension like uh, Selection Toys to come in here and uh, deselect all the faces. So I've got this extension called Selection Toys installed that you can get out of the, I want to say out of the SketchUp warehouse. But you can come in here and you can right click and you can deselect a whole bunch of faces and then so that you just have the lines selected and then you can click soften and smooth and so basically what that's going to do is that's going to take your terrain and it's going to make all the lines on here like um, like hidden geometry so you won't be able to see them anymore so and i'll link to this extension in the notes below but you can just go to the 3d warehouse and just select selection toys but then once you've kind of done that and you've taken your uh, You've taken your mesh just like this. What you can do is you can use this tool called Drape um, in order to uh, take this um, shape that you've created and make it kind of run along this face just like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to move this over top of wherever you want it to drop down. So and you can kind of like inference off of that um, by uh, moving your mouse like this and it'll kind of lock to the little pieces right here so you can move that until it is where you want it to be but then you just select your object and then you select this drape option and then you're going to select your mesh that you want to drape it on top of just like this and you can see what that did is that took that shape and it dropped it down but it dropped it down so it's actually running along this face 
So this is very useful for doing things like roads or sidewalks or anything like that. So, you know, and like for example, if I wanted to, I could come in here and and I could draw kind of a template like this, but I could actually come in here and draw a road shape just like this and then I could come in here and I could offset all of these in order to actually create my road just like this and then I could erase these extra lines and we'll come back in and close that in so that this is like a full and complete face you can see how this is a face and I can double click on it just like this I can make it a group and then I can use drape to drop it on this face well now you're gonna have a road that goes directly from your house down the hill just like this and all I did was created a flat surface kinda of moved it up and then use that as a canvas for um, drawing along this face just like this so this is a really useful thing to be able to do for like terrain modeling and stuff like that so and one thing to note when you're doing stuff like this is you do want to come in here and you want to save your model um, a bunch because uh, when you start dealing with a whole bunch of like hidden geometry and these tools and stuff, you can get a little bit of instability in your model. So just make sure before you do something like draping that you actually click that save button. So the next thing you can do is there's actually an option in here called add detail. And so basically the way that works is if you come in here and you create a grid kind of like this one, right that has uh, it's more like a 10 foot by 10 foot grid and uh, you need more detail in here what you can do is you can actually um, you can select this add detail option and you can come in here and you can detail these individual pieces just like this so like for example if you came in here and uh, you had this little um, you had this little terrain just like this and you came in here and you kind of modeled it and you've got it kind of up and down just like this but you need to add some detail to this piece so w one thing to note about terrain modeling is ideally you want to have as few faces and stuff like that in here as you can but what you could do on something like this is you could come in here and you could add a little bit of detail like for example if I was to uh, so there's this option in here for adding detail so if you click on that and then you click inside a little group just like this what that does is that adds that adds a triangle to the inside of your face so like if you had this hill right and you just needed to come in here and you just needed to add a little bit of extra detail just like this like let's say you wanted like a little canyon running through here or whatever you can come in here and you can use the add detail to add extra um, terrain and stuff like that on this side without adding polygons to the rest of this so instead of this having to be like a one foot by one foot grid you could do it with the 10 foot by 10 foot grid and then just kind of come in here and detail this other side just like this so this is really useful for um, you know just kind of uh, creating some extra stuff on this other side that uh, you don't necessarily need on this side so, and then the other thing you could do if you don't like doing it this way is, um, you know, instead of like clicking and moving these pieces like I was, you know, like clicking and dragging up and down, what you could do is you could just click, you could just double click in here to create, create some extra geometry and then you could come in here with the smooth tool and um, set it as kind of a smaller radius, like a three foot radius or something like that. And then, uh, it might have to be more than that. It might have to be like a seven foot radius. Um, enough that it'll kind of pick up some of these other pieces, but now you can uh, you can use that to move around all the geometry that you just created in here. So you can see how that's creating kind of a smoother geometry over here on this side. So you can edit things up and down or you know a whole bunch of different stuff. So this basically just gives you some options for coming in here and adding detail. So and then the last thing you can do, um, this is kind of a cool tool, um, I've turned on hidden geometry. So if you go to view hidden geometry, sometimes these lines, the triangles that are making up all your faces aren't necessarily running the way that you'd like them to. Like for example, instead of this running this way, you may want it to run from this corner to this corner. What you've got is you've got this option up in here for flip edges. So basically what you can do is you can come in here and you can flip these so that they're running from the other corner to the other corner just like this 
And so you can see that definitely changes the way that some of your uh, topography works. You can see how if I flip this one, for example, the face um, drops down a little bit more instead of being straight across like this. So but that's a real quick, easy way to come in here and just make some fast changes to your model. So anyway, all in all, this is a pretty robust toolbox of stuff for uh, working with terrain in SketchUp. So it, it's really a good place to kind of get you started on working with terrain and stuff like that. Anyway, that's where I'm going to end this video. Uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you using the sandbox tools? Did you even know it could do some of this stuff? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you really like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.